Today, we're going to explore the micro neighborhood of Thai Town in Elmhurst, Queens, the absolute best place in the city to eat, shop, and learn all about the culture of Thailand. And I can't think of a better day to do it. Let's get warm. Our guest, Joe DiStefano, has been referred to as the culinary king of Queens. He's a writer, tour guide, and he's even been on the Travel Channel. This is exactly the guy we needed. Joe, how are you? John, how are you? Doing great, long time no see. What makes Thai Town so fascinating, this miniature micro neighborhood straddling Elmhurst and Woodside is that there's so many Thai restaurants that are so specific and th that's how I know that there's so many Thai people living in here. Here we're at uh, La Moon, which specializes in Northern Thai food. Let's have the uh, uh, the Saiwa. This is a really awesome herbal Thai sausage. Okay. Really, really great. Let's do the regular size Leng Sa. Let's do Tom Kamun, the jackfruit salad. Really, really good. Oh, wow. Oh, the small one. This is this is the small one, guys. I want to let you know. Yeah. I can't imagine what the big one looks like. It has a lot more uh, spice, heat, and kick to it than the typical sausage that I'm used to eating in the U.S. I'm going to start with that. I mean, you can clearly see it just with all of the colors. Like you know that this sausage is going to pack a punch, and it packs a punch. You know, Joe. I look around this restaurant and I love the decor. It almost feels like I'm in some kind of like a hipster Brooklyn spot, this Sailor Moon themed. The art here was done by a friend of the owner from Bangkok and he said, you open a restaurant in New York, I'm gonna fly there and do the art for you. So that's where all this came from. This is a sign of a good co-host today. He wants me to get the entire experience. I like that. Including the pork rind. Including the pork rind, why not? All right. Hey, Tom Khan Noon, never had this before. Pork with jackfruit, a lot of herbs. Let's, let's take a big bite, make Joe proud. Mm. Oh, it's very good. This is definitely my style. Very juicy, very flavorful. You can feel that heat kicking in as well. I've really struggled to find good Thai food ever since moving to Park Slope, Brooklyn. And if you have a hunger for Thai food, there is no better place in New York City to come. Elmhurst is a neighborhood where real Thai people live, eat, work, and play, and they eat real Thai food. This is Thai food made for Thai people. Oh, where has this been my whole life? I'm gonna make a bold statement. This Lang is the best Thai food I've ever had in my life, including a trip to Thailand and everywhere I've ever been in New York. I can't think of a, a better thing I've had and enjoyed more than this Lang. Mm. Like every bite, I just want to savor this. Like, this is how you get the marrow out. I have to thank Joe. Four and a half years ago, we did a video in Jackson Heights, Queens, and he was the first person to really introduce me to the ethnic diversity of Queens. I never thought of Jackson Heights, Elmhurst, anything in that area as somewhere you need to go to really experience the food culture of New York. He opened up my eyes to that, and now it's something that I proudly can show other people. So I want to thank you many years later. Very welcome, and you know, that's one reason I like to do food tours. It's, it's cool to show people stuff, and they get to go places, and they get to try it, but when someone from Minneapolis says, you know, hey, now that we went to the Chinese food court in Flushing, I feel much more comfortable about going back to the one in, in my city. I'm really into country specific stores and Pata Market located a few doors down is basically a Thai 7-Eleven minus the frostbite inducing air conditioning. This is full moon party style in Koh Phangan. Yang. This is what you drink. <laughs> what you drink to stay awake. Does the logo look familiar? Lays? Yeah, but look at the ingredients. I don't know what it says. I could just kind of imagine what it is by looking at that. Let's show them. Grilled seafood and seafood sauce. You notice any similarity here, John? Just a little. It looks exactly the same. We should crack the open. One, two, three. I don't know if I like it or not, but I just keep eating them. I was expecting some kind of a seafood flavor in that. Mm -hmm. I don't know what a seafood flavor would taste like with a chip, but I didn't quite a get shrimpy. it. shrimpy. Yeah. Tell me in the comments. What is the strangest flavor of potato chip you've ever eaten before? I want to know. 
It's not often you find a Thai Buddhist temple in New York City, and this one sneaks up on you in the middle of a residential area. We're here at Wat Buddha Thai Tavon Vanaram of New York. This is a Thai temple. Like all real Thai neighborhoods, there's a Thai temple. So this is the cultural and spiritual heart of Thai town. Joe pointed out all of the shrines outside, which are definitely worth stopping to admire, even if you don't go inside. And just in case you've watched too many of my scam videos. So normally on the channel, we were telling you to avoid the fake monks in Times Square, but I assure you the monks inside here are actually real. Flush a little water. Good luck. And this is what they had outside. This is the, the gold leaf. You know, normally on these food tours, we just eat the local food, maybe talk to the chef, but we actually got to go to a Buddhist temple. So this added something a little bit extra to the video. Very impressed by this. Very respectful place. And feel free to come for sure. If you're in the area after you eat some Thai food, definitely worth it. And you're rolling on that? Yeah. Because Sabai is a place that is really popular in the Thai community, but nobody, including myself among food writers, has nobody ever talks about it. The food is really, really good. And one of my roommates was like, oh yeah, you, you have to try the pad thai there. It's just like in Bangkok. And that's why we're here. This is like we call the jasmine hotel. Jasmine, mocktail, and now I'm in the mood for a $3 happy hour Thai beer. You see this on tank tops all over uh, Koh San Road. The from the north is a lap milk. Thank you. A little minced pork, chili paste, and some liver. Now this is spicy, this is hot. Okay guys. Mm. That was hot. Is, uh, Beef barbecue, okay? Oh, perfect. Thank right. you. This is original from uh, North, from Thailand. You can oh, buy you. only one here from the Queens in New York. It's beef right here. This is calling my name. It's calling my name right here. Mm. I want to know what it tastes like with a little bit of that spicier sauce. So, medium rare, a little bit of the sauce. Which is spectacular. Mm. I think it's so much better with the with the sauce. Mm. It's so good. So one of the things my roommate from Bangkok said to me is like, "Oh yeah, you have you have to try to buy their pad thai is just like in Bangkok." Mm. Delicious, tangy, spicy, definitely not too sweet, very balanced like everything else on this table. Thai cooking is all about balance. Right before I went to Thailand, somebody told me if you ever don't know what to order, order Pad Thai. Uh, this is something I actually have judged a lot of Thai restaurants on. So I've had plenty of Pad Thai in New York before. Let's see how this ranks. Joe's absolutely right. So much of the Pad Thai in New York is just too sweet. I think this really does have that perfect balance of flavor. And we have a piece of shrimp here as well. If some of the stuff that we ordered today was too adventurous for you, you can always fall back on a pad thai like this, no question. After an overload of what felt like every type of Thai food imaginable, the only thing we didn't try yet was dessert and Khao Nam isn't your ordinary spot in Thai town. For our last stop, Kelmom is a yet another hyper-authentic Thai restaurant in Elmhurst. They're known for traditional Thai dishes, lots of takeaway, particularly under COVID, but they also do great desserts like the Kanam Bua that she's griddling up behind us. Uh, they're really crepes, but when you see them, you'll know why they're called uh, Thai tacos. 
Thai iced coffee. The most sugary coffee drink you can have this side of the Atlantic. To me, it feels more like a dessert than an actual coffee. Here we go. So what we have in front of us is a Thai crepe called Kanom Bois. So what color do you have? It's red. Okay, so you have salted coconut and there's like a little smear of meringue. So it's kind of savory, salty, sweet. This is definitely not your traditional American dessert flavors. We've got salty, we've got lime in here, and a really crunchy, very different, but I would say a good mixture of flavors. Like you're, you're not gonna forget eating something like this, or as Joe called it, a Thai taco. The yellow one has uh, candied egg yolk called the uh, foitong in there. This is the traditional uh, shaved ice dessert called the uh, Top Tim Krob. So these are uh, water chestnuts in tapioca. Almost everything I've had today, with the exception of the pad thai, it was the first time I've tried it. Mm. Different. This is a Tokyo chicken hot dog. Mm. It's a sweet crepe around a hot dog. Completely different experience. I love it though. Mm. Look up. Tokyo pandan. So this is a pandan. Pandan is a, it's a plant, a leaf used in a lot of Southeast Asian cooking and desserts. That is really, really, really good. The Tokyo hot dog is actually the top three things we've had today. Completely surprised by this hot dog meets dessert. Wow. Tastes fancy. It's like a pig in a cashmere blanket. There you go. That's that's how you do it. If you'd like to take a deep and delicious dive with me into Queens, please visit joedestefano.nyc to learn more about my tours. Thank you so much to Joe for an incredible tour of Thai Town here in Elmhurst. Check out our other NYC food playlist, link down below. Guys, thank you so much for watching. As always, until next time.